Hey guys, so um, I'm back on my old camera for now just because the settings clearly need to be adjusted for my last video because I looked pale as fuck and I'm not actually that pale. I'm not as white as paper, like I do have a little bit of colour. But anyway, today I just wanted to go through my absolute favourite makeup, so for the whole of 2022. These are the products I reached for a bunch and I just want to give a quick shout out to. There are a couple of honourable mentions as well, things that I've used quite a bit or I've hit pan on, so let's get into this. Okay, so the first thing is primer. I didn't really use primers that much this year, however I did use a bunch, the NYX Bear With Me Prime Set Refresh fresh setting spray. I use this all the time. This always, I don't know what it was, but it always felt like any foundation I put over the top, whether it was powder foundation or liquid foundation, I always felt like it was super smoothing on my skin. I didn't feel like I could really see any pores. I mean, you can see how much I've used. I actually had to stop using this because I was using it so fucking much, but I started using it again today. Okay, liquid foundation. I didn't try many liquid foundations. I was super on the powder foundation train. I tried out the NARS Soft Matte. It was nice, but I did feel like it broke apart a little bit on my skin although I have a new primer I've been testing out recently I think is killer so I may have to try that out with that foundation but the foundation I used a bunch was the Dior what is this called backstage face and body foundation I have mine in shade 0N this is a small bottle but it does have the 30 oh actually it has 50 milliliters in it Holy fucking shit, I didn't even realise this had 50 milliliters. This is 20 more milliliters than you'd get in normal foundations. Something about this foundation made my skin look really, really like smooth and it is a medium coverage foundation, but the finish of it was just so, so gorgeous and it lasts a really, really good time on my skin. And then for powder foundations, I have the Rimmel London Lasting Finish Buildable Coverage Powder Foundation. I reached for this a ton on days where I just wanted to go to the shops and for days where I actually I was going out for a little bit longer or I was on camera or anything like that, I used the Dior Face and Body Powder No Powder. This isn't meant to be a powder foundation, I don't think. It's not actually meant to be a powder foundation, but it has the prettiest glow and like this is actually a lot bigger. I don't know, there's something about Dior I really wanted to try stuff this year. And yeah, this powder foundation, super, super pretty glow. Highly recommend it. For concealer, um, the whole of the year, basically, I used this Eye Bright Illuminating Under Eye Concealer by Revolution. Can you see how much I've used? I have so little left. I've actually tried to put it away for a while because I'm trying to decide, do I actually adore this as much as I think I do? And I think I do. I don't want to keep supporting Revolution considering everything that's come out. But I do really, really love this concealer. And then recently I've been using the Tarte Shape Tape again. And I forgot how well this covers. I'm really, really struggling recently to not have super bad lines under my eyes. I mean, I am still going to get a few lines because I have lines under my eyes. It's just inevitable. You can't get rid of something that's physically there. But this is one of the few concealers that I feel like it doesn't accentuate it as much as other concealers have recently. Because I've been going back through other concealers that I used to absolutely adore and I'm really struggling it not accentuating my, my fine lines. So this has been incredible for that. And to cover, of course, I've been using my NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop. It's my favorite loose setting powder. I went through a whole thing of this and this is my second pot. And I couldn't not have a backup because it was so, so, so good. Cannot live without this now. Okay, so for contour, I know this is really boring, so I'm gonna skip through it really quick. I did hit pan on my Kevin Aquan contour powder from last year. It's still absolute favorite. But I have been trying to use more cream contours recently because I feel like my contour game just kind of fades really, really quickly if I don't use cream contour. And I was using the She Glam. Again, I try to not promote She Glam because of everything that's gone on with Shane and come out about that. I bought this before I found out about it, so this She Glam Sun Sculpt Liquid Bronzer in Soft Tan, which isn't Soft Tan, it's literally cold grey, like, brown contour. It is really, really good, but I am trying to find another affordable alternative for contour products because I don't want to keep supporting this. I will definitely use it up because I really like it, but I won't repurchase. I will say a shout out to my Patrick Tarr contour palette that I bought recently. I really, really am enjoying that. I did find the bronzer. It took way too long to build up, but I do really like the contour. I've been trying it out for about two months. I haven't been using it all year. It'll probably be in next year, so. And for bronzer, I want to give a shout out to my Milani and Physicians Formula bronzers. Hit pan on both of those this year. My NARS. Oh, this is Splash of Shader as well. Holy shit, I just bought foundation. I got delivered today and I'm testing out. 
And I didn't realise NARS was by the same company. That explains a lot. This is the like NARS matte bronzer and this is in Valatia. It's a really nice sort of neutral bronzer for someone as fair as me. You don't have to build it up too much and it blends really nicely. It's it's a nice matte bronzer that provides a, a good amount of warmth to your skin. I really genuinely love this. I put it down, reach for the bronzers to try and obviously get through my, my collection. And then I will always come back to it because it. And when I put it on, I'm like, why did I put this back down? Because it is such a good colour for me. Like, probably one of the best in my collection, to be honest. That and the Milani probably could go head to head. Maybe I'll do that one day. There's so many things I think are dupes for colour and packaging and stuff like that. I feel like I really need to do a dupes video. Okay, for highlighter, I've been kind of cycling through my collection. I have been using the Amrezi highlighter a bunch this year, but the one I sort of refound was the Laura Geller Gelato Swirl Illuminator Peach Glow. I'm actually wearing it today. It's such a pretty highlighter. So you can build it up to look super wet and intense, like obviously that is from a finger swatch, or you can have it like kind of natural. It's just a really, really gorgeous highlighter that I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on. And then for blush, I have, I will say I want to shout out my Milani Petal Primavera blush. I grabbed for that a bunch. The ones I feel like I refound this year was the Wet n Wild Baked Blush in Hummingbird Hype. I know this is a, a limited edition colour, and Sheen, this is such a gorgeous blush. It looks really, really intense there, but you can get it to just put a flush on your cheek and it's so, so flattering. It really, really is. Of course, my favorite brand, uh, Pat McGrath. This blush in Flotatious, I have no fucking clue, but this blush, I've used this so many times. You wouldn't know because the pattern does not go, but I've used this so many times. This is my go-to blush all of the time. It lasts a decent amount of time. I will say it does fade a little bit. I always have that problem. I feel like I need to put cream blush and then this blush. If I'm going to use a cream blush, I just don't ever see the point in putting a powder blush over the top. I do feel like this is one of my absolute holy grails. And that is one of the reasons why I bought another Pat McGrath blush just recently. Okay, so for brow, I've been trying to get through my pencils, but none of them have been like, oh my god, I cannot live without this pencil. Although, again, my Milani one. I do grab for that every now and then when I just want a really quick brow. I even use that today. Like that's what's in my brows today. The Urban Decay Brow Blade is one of my favourite like pen and pencil brow products. Uh, it has a pencil on one side and a pen on the other and one of the reasons why I really like this one is because I do really like my NYX brow pen thing but because the colour is very intense I have to be aware that if I'm going to use it I'm going to have a very bold brow that day. Whereas this one because the colour is a little bit more light I can go for having a more natural brow and also I don't have to just use the pen. I feel like sometimes, especially if I'm in a rush, using a pen just gives me anxiety because I feel like if I fuck up, that's my brows for today. This one just gives me the least anxiety and I've got the pencil there if I don't feel as confident that morning because I can, I can get kind of shaky as well depending on how high or low my blood sugar is. And then I will say I've been gravitating towards clear brow gel recently just because I feel like it holds my brow hairs up the best. Grabbing for the Benefit 24 hour brow setter Complete dupe for this is the Knit Brow Glue and they are bringing out tinted ones for that which I really really want to try because I do love tinted brow gels but I have definitely been grabbing for this. I am trying to use it up because it's in my collection. So I don't know if that's one of the reasons why I grab for it the most, but it does do an incredible job of holding up my brows. Eyeshadow primer. I've been using my Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion in Eden all year to the point where it's now basically dried up. I don't know if you can hear my dehumidifier in the background. If you... One of my go-to eyeshadow palettes this year, shout out to my Linda Halberg, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like the 1950s esque style palette. Absolutely gorgeous. I've been reaching for that one or this one. This is the one I use basically all at the start of the year and into the middle of the year. This is the Supreme Nudes, the Quickie palette by Artist Couture. Um, and these are the colours. I know these are super basic, but they are so pretty. The only problem I have is with this one. Everything else is so like creamy and it's easy to blend. Um, you only have three shimmers and the rest are mattes, but they are gorgeous absolutely stunning. I don't even know if you can tell. This has like a big welt in it the amount of times I have used it. I like that I can get a cool tone shade and I can get a warm tone and then you can mix to get more neutral. I, I just absolutely adore it. I was very tempted to get the warm to neutral tone one but I knew I wouldn't use that as much as I would use this and it just shows because every time I went into the office this year or maybe a couple of times I was using this palette. Holy holy grail of a cool tone neutral lovers palette. Okay, eyeliner. Um, This is, I think, the only eyeliner I've basically used all year. I can't remember another eyeliner I've used, but glittery sort of eyeliners for different kind of looks. 
This is the Benefit Roller Lash. It has a proper felt tip pen, not a like brush tip. And it is so easy to get like a nice thin line as well. And that's actually what I've lined my eyes with today. I didn't used to put black eyeliner on for a really long time. I was just putting eyeshadow on and I forgot how much I need eyeliner to really frame my eyes. I grab for this all the time. It's so easy to get a nice thin line like today or I can go thick. Once this is out, 99% certain I will go and buy like a full size. Oh, and that's lasted me forever. That's mainly meant to make probably last about six months and I've used it like all year. And then for mascaras, Kiko Extra Sculpt Waterproof. I've used this all fucking year. <laughs> I got this with like all the Christmas stuff last year and I've used this all year. It's got like a slightly more tapered hourglass than my, what I'm used to, but it does a really, really good job of giving you nice thick lashes. I'm wearing this one today, but you probably can't tell that great. I do also have a full video on this. I'll put it in the cards here, but this is the Rimmel Thrill Seeker Mascara. I like this one because again, it has like a super curvaceous hourglass wand, which is really, really nice. On the first coat, it gives you kind of natural lashes and then you can really build it up. It's not as good as my Pat McGrath, but for more of a everyday mascara, I really, really, really enjoy this. And then for eyeliners, just really quick, my cat knocked a bunch of my stuff off and I feel like I've just lost my Linda Halberg Zeo, Zeo Flash. I use that all the time this year for inner corner and just slightly under the eye highlighting. And if I wasn't using that, I was using these Kiko ones. I was always grabbing for these for the black and the brown because these are slightly taller. It's so easy to find in my collection of eyeliners. They're easy to smudge. They also have shimmers on the end. I grabbed for this more golden one, which is very similar to my Anastasia one that I used about, I think it was last year. And this one is more rose gold, a little darker for me, but it's still really pretty. Very pigmented, easy to use, love them. And also I think they're dupes for Charlotte Tilbury. This year, I feel like I wasn't really wearing lipstick. I wasn't really wearing liquid lipstick. I wasn't really wearing like lipstick bullets at all. Quick shout out to my Patrick Tar. I've loved that ever since I got it, but I have only had that a couple of months. But otherwise I've been using these two. These are Colourpop, I talked about them last year. But Ashton and Cool BFF are super, super cool tone. The thing I don't like about these is that they literally just fall out. It's really, really annoying. This one in Ashton is my favorite. So you have Cool BFF there. Yeah, this one's my favorite, the Ashton. I have been using lip gloss more this year. This Illamasqua one I got off of TK Maxx. I've been finding a lot of gems on TK Maxx this year just to sort of test out product. I bought the Illamasqua, what is this called? Loaded Lip Polish in Flaunt. This is one of my favorite lip glosses of all time. I couldn't find it when I was doing my full face for one of my videos this year, but this is the color. It is a cool tone lover's dream. It's a really, really gorgeous shade. I was really worried that they were discontinuing the shade, but I think you can get this in full size still on the Illamasqua website. And then I caved this year because everyone's been talking about House Laboratories and I finally bought one of the OG lip glosses, not the new formulated ones. But I've always wanted to try a few bits from House Labs. As much as I love and adore Lady Gaga, I have since like Just Aunt. What was that, 2011? I don't love supporting people that wear fur. Yeah, this shade in, what fucking shade is this? Enchanted? No, Entranced. I also like for applicator because it's cupped. This shade, because it has so much glitter in it, just there, it has such a wet, wet shine to it, as you can see here. It almost looks like a fucking highlighter. Gorgeous. And it's super moisturizing as well. I had dry lips a little bit this year, and every time I just wanted to feel like a little something on my lips, I put this on just so my lips feel a little bit nicer, and it always made my lips look nice and juicy. And I even wore this in a video, and I was like, hey, what, what gloss was I wearing there? And then I realized I was wearing this. These two have literally been in my bag all year. So those are all the products I absolutely loved this year. I have been testing out some products recently. I got some stuff from TK Maxx, which was like high-end, like a bit cheaper. <laughs> and then I bought a bunch of stuff from Cult Beauty in their end of year, 40% off or whatever it was discount sale. So I want to test out a bunch of those products a little bit more. There are some products I am loving and actually all of those are from TK Maxx. <laughs> Unbelievably, there was a primer, a foundation and a concealer I have absolutely adored. I wore all of them on Christmas day and they looked incredible still at the end of the day. So. Can we just appreciate how good my foundation looks like even my contour this powder is still there my nose like I've had my glasses on literally all day but my chin my under eyes look really nice this is a new primer foundation and concealer combo that I've been trying for the past like week and I am literally in love. I've put this on about 10 o'clock and it is now 8.30. My foundation looks maybe two to three hours old just because of the shine due to my oils. 
there is no breaking apart whatsoever i can't believe how good this looks if you want to see that i will be doing a full video probably in january so if you want to see that make sure to subscribe if you like this video please make sure to give this a like and subscribe if you like it i'd really appreciate it. i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope to see you all in the next one bye